Welcome back everybody. Welcome to our second part of product and process design. Today we'll be looking at processes and we will begin by discussing how to select the right type of process and in particular which types of processes are there. We will have a look at how to design processes, what uh, tools can support us in designing processes. We will have a look at some rather simple performance metrics, metrics for processes. And finally, we will have an overview of processes of um, recent technological trends that are able to support and influence the design of our processes. The learning goals of today's lecture are the following. If you manage to go through this lecture, you will be able to differentiate among different types of processes. You will be able to use a flowchart diagram to design simple processes. You will be able to apply simple process performance metrics and you can name, you are aware of current technological advancements and how these advancements impact product and process design. Let's start with the first section. Which types of processes are there and which one is right for you? Let's uh, gather our thoughts and think about different production processes. Which production processes come to mind? On this picture you have an example of an automotive production process where some robots uh, perform some production steps on an automobile. Here is another example of a manufacturing process. You see here are several workers in these black shirts, uh, some guys in blue shirts, maybe these are their supervisors, I'm not sure. And you see that these workers are performing tasks on some machines. So in contrast to the automotive example where the product that gets manufactured is moved on some production line. Uh, in this example we have some individual workstations and the product has to be manually carried from one worksta workstation to another workstation. Another pro production process that you are well aware of, uh, baking. You do it at home maybe and you see you have a couple of machineries, some equipment, you have some ingredients and then you put everything together in a certain sequence, use some of your tools to work on, on the equipment. Um, this is also a production process. If we want to sum up this discussion, we need to distinguish between two main types of production processes. Uh, they are on different types of the continuum. Uh, the first one are intermittent operations. Intermittent means irregular, fragmentary or discontinuous. Usually we use these types of processes, these types of operations, when we want to produce very individual products and we have a low production quantity, a low production volume. Yeah. So maybe we manufacture a customized product for a single customer and another customer also gets a customized product which is completely different from the first one. Uh, we use intermi intermittent operations when the different products that we want to produce have different processing needs. Let's go back to the pictures. So, in a baking factory, if you do it like 
these two guys in manual labor, uh, you have very individual needs and you deal with individual needs with different machines. Here in this uh, workshop it is similar. When we want to produce something, no one says that we need to use all the machines that are available. We use only those machines that we really need to manufacture this. However, when we are on a manufacturing line, then our product moves through the factory and at least it reaches all the machines and it is um, something usually happens at every machine. Usually our manufacturing resources are grouped into functions and the product is routed through the factory and is only visiting those resources that the product requires. Typically such intermittent operations are quite labor intensive because of the high customization, but they do not need too much capital as a rule of thumb. And on the other end of the continuum we have repetitive operations. We use repetitive operations when we produce a few very highly standardized products in a high production quantity. We, use, uh, we produce these usually in sequence in a flow line, so the product moves through the factory, visits all the machines in sequence and some actions are performed. So every product follows the main production steps and all operations of the line and typically this is more capital intensive but less labor intensive. Let's look at an example for intermittent operations. Uh, think of a healthcare facility, think of a hospital. You have many different workshops, for example dentist, surgery, emergency, pharmacy, radiology, whatever. And of course a patient that enters the hospital is not visiting all the different uh, functions of the manufacturing process. The patient is treated very individually and only in those departments and with the equipment that is really required to treat the patients. Though if you enter a hospital, usually you visit only one or two apartments and the majority of the other departments are completely out of reach for you. This is an example for an intermittent operation process. On the other hand, let's look at some food production processes as examples of repetitive operations. Here in the beverage industry we have a very small variety of products. Basically we fill some water-based products into bottles, if it's Coca-Cola or Sprite or something else. Yeah. The outcome is highly standardized and is going through a flow line. And the same when we look at the, for example, uh, sweets, a chocolate factory where we produce chocolate or, or um, yeah, where we produce chocolate and our products move through all the machines through the production line uh, on almost every step the same operations are performed the variation are very small and of course this process is highly effective highly efficient and we can produce many similar products with less uh, labor input.